So, now to introduce our next speaker. We have David Nind here today, and he's going to be talking about documentation for the Core Hub project, how we can improve it, and what plans the Core Hub project documentation team have for the future. So welcome, David. We're really happy to have you here, and um, we look forward to the talk, which is titled, From a Manual to a Documentation Portal, What's the Future for Core Hub's Documentation? Over to David. You might not want to clap um, yet. <laughs> um, Tenakoto Katoa, greetings and hello to you all. Um, I guess everyone likes documentation, don't they? <laughs> but probably more realistically, you like um, either being able to solve problems or um, learn something new when you're trying to figure something out. And, and there's nothing worse than going to the documentation for a project. Um, and free and open source projects in particular, and you know it's out of date and um, um, it's it's not right, accurate. So, um, and it's a challenge for most free and open source um, projects, and 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 it's the same for Koha. So, I'm with each release for Koha. There's new features and there's enhancements and there's um, bug fixes and and the release notes are a mile long, and uh, that's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's a challenge for the documentation team to keep up. Now, I'm not speaking on behalf of the documentation team, although I am part of it, but um, these are my ideas, and, and some of these things may not go anywhere. But these are my ideas on how we can look at improving the Koha documentation. You know, the project's 20 years old, and it's had a manual of some sort, um, um, during that period. Um, and what I'm going to talk about today, if you were at KohaCon 19 or, or you watched the live stream, there's going to be some things um, uh, familiar um, because it's pretty much a similar presentation. Um, and I haven't magically um, magicked up a document portal that answers all your questions and is 100% up to date and... Um, uh, six, nine months ago, I thought this would be a good idea, and, and I had tons of time to uh, make something work and uh, demo something. So this is more ideas, and I'm good at ideas. Um, I'm not necessarily good at making them work. Um, but I thought I'd get r straight to the point and say I, where I think um, we should be heading. And at the moment... Um, and I'll cover each of these three points as we go through. Um, and I thought I'd get straight to the point. Um, so at the moment, Koha manual is the traditional book type manual. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the bigger trend in the technical communication or te technical writing community is a topic-based approach. And, and by that, what I mean by that is you have sh short chunks around a particular topic that's succinct and standalone. So you might have a task to, I was going to say add a catalogue record, but that's not quite a simple task, but um, you know, you have a succinct thing that says do step one, step two, step three, and you don't mix it in with um, reference material describing all the various things, because when you're trying to do something, you just want to know, well, what do I have to do, and I don't have years to read through this manual. Um, and you might have reference material, so stuff you look up occasionally because, you know, you don't know what it um, means or it's something you don't use regularly. And you might, if you're new to Koha or a certain part of Koha, for example, I don't know very much about cataloguing or, uh, or uh, what are some of the other things in Koha that um, transfers and things like that. <clears throat> you know, um, when you're new to a particular topic that you're not familiar with, um, concept topics, try and explain what, what's happening here. Um, but by and large, what's happening in the commercial world and everywhere else is it's focusing on task-based things because people just want to get things done. Um, and what happens is a little diagram here. You have a whole lot of topics rather than a manual and a chapter. And you combine them together with a table of contents, equivalent, and then you can produce multiple outputs. Um, you, it might be a guide on whatever topic or it might be training tutorial or it might be a quick reference guide. 
but you've got all these topics and you can combine them into whatever information product you would like. Um, and you can reuse those topics. So if you write something about doing X, Y, Z and you know, you don't copy and paste it into I'm writing something else today, I'll just take the last one and copy it. You can re up, reuse that one. Um, and it's a significant change from a book-based um, approach to, to writing documentation. Um, there are benefits, but there's lots of challenges as well. And, and using this approach, you could create a core set of um, guides or material, and then, and then you could then reuse that for training or a, a support portal where everyone can get all the answers um, to what you want. Um, and to do this properly, and a, a really basic diagram, I'm sure most of you have seen support portals for other vendors and software um, products. Um, but you know, you want to find things in one place and it be searchable and, and findable. But it needs a bit of a plan and a content development guide. So I think this is where Kohars should potentially be going in the future. Um, but I thought, well, why? Why should we go that way? And, and these are straight out of my presentation from last year. But um, so, so in the wider world, um, it, it's not really about writing a manual anymore. So these are the, some of the things people are trying to do. And I like this diagram. And that's a weird font. Um, I really I like the, this diagram. Um, you know, some people are trying to learn learn new things. They want tutorials that are accurate and up to date. Um, <clears throat> when people are new to things, they want to um, an explanation and trying to un understand the concepts. I'm sure librarians understand what Mark's all about, um, particularly catalogs, but not everyone else does. <laughs> um, and if you're just trying to solve a problem, I've got this thing I need to do, then you know. Uh, you try and solve problems, then how-to guides or step-by-step, -step, how do I do this? And then there's the more traditional stuff, the reference that you're available. So that's one model um, of looking at um, the type of documentation that community should provide for, for the people that use its software. Um, the history of content, I know everyone likes to put dot one and dot two, but you know, in the good old days, you had a, a really, every bit of software came with a huge manual and um, and you'd struggle to read it all and it would, I, I remember Microsoft Office um, manuals and there was a whole suite of them really wide and then they ended up in the bin when the next version came around. Um, and then the technical communication profession went to more um, topic-based um, you know, they split this manual up, and you had online help, and you, and it was a bit more um, focused and then incorporated into the user interface. So, um, but generally, it was still one person taking responsibility for something and writing the whole lot. Um, and now there's this idea of um, content three or components. Um, we've got content everywhere now for. Um, any software product or anything you can imagine. There's user forums and there's the vendor's site um, and there's um, CRM systems and they've got knowledge bases and they've got training material and, and you've got tons of content um, about whatever it is that you have all over the place. And then the next bit which does my head in was um, the idea of content information 4.0. Um, Sometimes now, particularly in the aerospace and pharma, pharma, pharmaceutical and other industries um, and heavy machinery, um, it's machine to machine talking. So this machine's configured with X, Y, Z components and it knows which bits to grab and display and, and configuration. So, so it's moving really fast and it's all componentized and and yeah, it's, it's all behind the scenes now. Um, yeah, so I hope that doesn't um, for technical communicators like me. That's a sort of exciting, but it's really weird. And you've got chatbots now. I don't think I've come across a good one yet. I don't know about you, but <laughs> um, and then 
I really like this book, and um, it's really around everything. These intelligent content should be intelligence now. So it's broken up into those smaller modules. It's structured. It's reusable. It's format free, and and you can be really smart with the content you create and use it once and make it easier for translation. Um, the Koha community is a global community. We've probably, I don't know how many languages are, are on, the, on the translation um, th and thing, but um, it is worldwide and not English isn't the first language for many, many of the Koha community members. Um, so if you want something really good to read and if you're into content, it's a good read. Um, and the last thing that's sort of happening in the wider world is um, content strategy. And I tend not to, I ignore everything with the word strategy in it because I work for government. I don't tell them I said this, but <laughs> they can probably watch it. Um, I, most, most strategies I see for government are, are full of waffle, really, and pretty meaningless twaddle is what I tend to say. There are some occasional good ones, and, but they... They're not really anything um, that you can write home about sometimes, but they look good, mostly. Um, but the idea of content strategy for what we're talking about is, um, you know, at the end you've got someone trying to do something, and and you ideally you have some information products that support that. So whether it's training or a guide or a tutorial or something like that, um, you incorporate some feedback into. Um, mechanisms, so whether it's comments or forums or whatever, um, and we get a lot of that with the Koha community. Um, but to support that, you know, you, how you acquire your content, you know, all your rules and processes and translations and, and, and how you write your content is, sort of needs to be set behind the scenes. Um, you know, need a way to deliver it, so the current manual, it's sort of continuous integration, we update a section and does its thing, Chris makes it do its thing, or set it up, and, and then the manual, the updated pages are available once it's churned through that. Um, there's a big thing about content engagement these days, which, yeah, um, but it's, it's involving people and finding out what people want, and, and, and most organisations, and including the free software community, um, only have a limited amount of resources to do things, and that's not unique by any means. And, and then how you manage your content, version control, and things like that. Um, most organisations in the commercial sector will spend a lot of money on content strategy um, because you tend to have marketing and writers and trainers and other people all writing content and doing it their way. There's a lot of duplication and a lot of um, uh, areas that want to defend their patch, but when you try and large organisations, when you try and combine it, sometimes they want a consultant to tell them what they knew they needed to do anyway. So doing content strategy is normally quite expensive and um, time-consuming. And, yeah, so... But that's one of the key things that's happening out in the wider world. So where does that leave us? There's the co community. And, and I just thought I'd digress slightly, which I'm good at. Um, and I'd just like to look at some of the things that are happening that I think are really good out in, in the Koha community, and not necessarily the documentation team. Um, there's a couple of things there that we're, we're working on, and it's, always seem, it's a slow progress when it's a volunteer community. Um, but I do have to shout out to some of the vendors that make time available for their staff to work on community things, such as the documentation and development and all those things. Um, they're a really key part of making this happen and sharing that stuff. So I just thought I'd highlight a couple of resources that uh, maybe you know about or maybe you don't. Um, and I'll, I've just got some screenshots. There's some Bywater stuff from Bywater Solutions, who are one of our sponsors, of course. Um, Koha US uh, community has been creating a lot of stuff. And, and Librio has a knowledge base and P PTFS Europe, and I'm not sure where the link went there, um, they've got some videos on YouTube and things like that. So I just thought I'd highlight some of those. Um, so Bywaters, have anyone not been to Bywater Solutions blogs or videos or not watched at least one of them? No one wants to put their hand up. But 
<laughs> okay. Um, so if you're trying to figure out things, um, they've got really good good stuff, and it's short and easy to, to listen, and I think they're talking next about some of the things they do. Um, and they've got some good checklists and some good blogs and lots of good videos. Um, the Monday Minutes is quite cool um, if, if people are um, into learning how things work. Um, their video channel goes back a long time, and they've always been really good at um, uh, sharing their videos, and, and there's lots of them. And they've started... Um, some deep dive, and so if you want to know it, the latest one, the first one is about the Koha Advanced Cataloging Institute, which is quite cool, but um, anyway. Um, and in the other Koha US, of, um, this is just a screenshot from their page. Um, it goes down quite a bit, but they've um, put a lot of resources together, and, and that's a really useful way if you're trying to f figure out how Koha does something. And um, they uh, shout out for their special interest groups, which are not just US centric. So, um, if you're interested in acquisitions or cataloging or any of those topics, then they rec they've recorded them, even if the time zones don't work, and they really can be useful to watch. And, and Librio has a knowledge base, so it's sort of where I think we should be heading with the document portal. They've created some short pages on various topics that they get asked by their clients and customers. Um, their one's in, unusual in that it's in two la it's, it's in English and French, so that's really cool as well. So um, it's nice to see some of that stuff. And PTF Euro PTFS Europe um, um, has some great videos and short videos that are easy to watch if you want to um, keep up to date. So I think some of that stuff's really cool and really useful. And it would be nice, you know, um, I don't think the documentation team could keep up, particularly with Biowater Solution. <laughs> um, last year we created a bit of a documentation plan, so that's on the wiki, and I will add the printable version. Um, and that incorporates some of the things I'm talking about today. So um, I really welcome any feedback on that. Um, it sort of s sets the scene in some of the things we might, we're trying to do with the documentation team, hopefully. And we've started a content development guide. Now, the developers who write the code, they have their guide um, and guidelines for coding and things. So the content development guide is something similar for the people writing content for the manual and other, and, and other things. So it's an early stage yet, but it you know, incorporates things you're used to with writing, like a style guide and a terminology list. So, you know, using allow list rather than whitelist and... Um, and some of the terms like staff interface other than staff client or, or, or intranet. Um, so we're trying to get a lot more consistent with some of the terms we use so that it helps with translation and, and things like that. So we have been doing some things, but we don't have a document portal yet. Um, so I think this is really a summary. I think you know it's not going to happen straight away, and I'd like to get a demonstration available or a a dem quick demo of some of the things I've been working on. Um, but yeah, changing to that topic-based approach so that it's small, short bits of content that you can mix and match and to, to create um, whatever it is you need to create. Um, uh, and I, I think that that's the way the commercial world's going and I think it can work for, for um, free and open source software communities as well. Um, there's a lot of technical detail behind this, but um, if it scares you away, I think the current manual's done in a format called restructured text, which is pretty, if you're used to things like Markdown or things like that, it's, it's not XML or DocBook or um, some of those harder to learn um, uh, uh, things. And, and yes, yeah, very similar to Markdown in some respects. So. Yeah. Um, so I just thought I'd like to leave you with a few thoughts. The, the goal for documentation... I've had a few thoughts today. But, um, the, is, is not, the goal of the documentation team really isn't to create a manual or, gui or guides or other information products. Um, they, they, they are things that we should be doing, but I think the real aim is to make it easier for the people who, who want 
organisations who want to adopt and use Koha, we want to do it so that they can solve their challenges and meet their needs of, com of the community rather than just writing a manual and the job's done. So I think if, if we take that focus, then I think that's the right way to go. Um, I'm, I'm around the conference all this week and I've been known to be online a bit. Um, and so I'm happy to, if anyone's got thoughts about documentation or writing manuals or all those things, I'm happy to chat. Um, and people can contact me if they want. And so that's all I really wanted to say within my allotted time, um, which is just slightly ahead. And, and there's some references in to some of those, um, some of those pictures are taken from various bits and pieces. Um, and so if you're really into documentation, um, um, f feel free to look those up. Um, I think they're quite good. Um, and the one I really like is the one at the end, which is um, Kathy Sierra, and she has a really good book saying "Badass: Making Users Awesome." So, um, which, uh, yeah. And on Friday, um, all going well. There's a documentation workshop, and and this won't necessarily be talking about thinking about how to do it better, but if you want to to learn the easy way to edit the manual without um, having to learn Git and other weird and wonderful things um, for version control then and just want to be able to use your browser to fix up that spelling mistake then feel free to come along and, um, and I'll try and show you um, how we do it currently. So thank you. I just let David know I'm going to put him on the spot with a question. I know I said no loud questions, but as MC, I'm going to take some liberties. So, David, I was just wondering for our audience today, in person and online, if you could tell us a bit about how to participate in the documentation team. Well, that's a good, good question. So, most of us were led by Carolyn in um, in, in Libro and. Montreal, Canada. Um, we have a monthly IRC meeting, so so I wouldn't be too scared of IRC if you've never used IRC. Um, it's really easy to use. So we have a monthly meeting. Um, we have some, and I'll post some links on the Twitter, just the getting started with editing the manual. Um, you can uh, send us, yeah, so there's some good guides on, well, starting guides on edit, how to edit the manual. Um, and we're always willing to help. We'll do a one-on-one -on -one session video. I'm sure everyone's sick of video conferencing now, but um, um, it makes it easy if we to walk you through some of those things if you wanted to. But yeah, come along to the documentation team. Um, and even if it's just some small things, or or you want to help, you know, you know all about cataloging, and you want to rewrite that thing that's been bugging you in the in the manual to date, then um, feel free to come along to the to the monthly meeting, or and there's a mailing list, so you can ask questions on that. We do tend to what to watch the the general mailing list as well. So if you've got questions or you want to be involved, just post it, and one of us will hopefully help you. Um, yeah, and the other bit is the the roles are open for um, the dare I say it, the 21.05 release. So. 20, version 20.11 of Koha will be out sometime later next month. Um, and at the start of, at the end of a release and the start of a new one, there's a election of all the people involved. So, so it's not as scary as it sounds. You don't have to have a speech or anything. You just need to um, put your name on the wiki and say, I'd like to be involved with the documentation. Um, all our tasks are in a system called Tega, and they are all... Um, and there's a lot of them, so if you if you want to help out, we'd we'd love to have you, and feel free to hit me up, and and we're um, happy to help.